Roston was amazing in the series against Afghanistan. Like he was someone who could ball ten overs and he could bat up the order. He also finished a game for you. So, what kind of balance that somebody like Roston brings to a West Indies ODI side? I think he brings a good balance in to our team. Um, he's a you know first of all he's a Test batsman. He has Test hundred. So that in itself, I think is a great asset you know for us having a guy who bats in the middle order in Test cricket coming in in one day cricket and can play any role and and given that he can bowl as well. I think it gives her that opportunity to play either an extra bowler, extra rounder, or an extra batter as well. So he has been very valuable for us. You know, we saw his talents, and you know, we're trying to exploit, you know, what he can, you know, give for himself. As he previously stated, he liked to be, you know, up there in terms of being number one or rounder in the world. And you know, well, no better place than getting that opportunity, you know, to do it. So he has come in. It's all of a left field selection, but it's something that has worked for us, and you know, he's going to be an integral part. You know, for us going forward. Hi, Karan. Yeah. Yesterday, uh, Aston coach Roddy Eswick told that uh, the likes of Hetmeyer, Puran, all these youngsters should look at Kohli and how hard work is boring, but it brings about success. What is your assessment of these guys over the last one year or so in ODI cricket? How do you think they can be consistent run machines? Um, again, it's about preparation and it's about. You being able to realize your goals, realize your potential, and you're watching other guys who have done it or who are consistently doing it. They, the way they go about doing their stuff, the way they train, physically, mentally, the amount of time they invest in their cricket careers, is what is going to make the difference. And you know, these guys who are successful, they eat and they sleep cricket, and that's something we as cricketers who want to be destined to be great. Um, needs to try to emulate. So again, you know, for the younger guys in, in our team, it's a matter of, you know, changing your training habits and, you know, being more focused in what you want to do and what you want to achieve and putting more into your games. I'm not saying guys have not done it. You know, guys have done it. We as individuals see how guys work hard. Sometimes the results doesn't reflect, but sometimes you need to do the extra. And I think it's something that we have spoken about and I said I'm really, really excited with this bunch of guys that we have because these guys are really, really putting in the hard work, you know, behind the scenes. At the end of the day, let's wait and see the results will show, but have patience and they're actually doing what is required to try to succeed, you know, at the international level. <coughs> Hi, Gary. Uh, how crucial was the last series win against Afghanistan because it came after a very long time in one-day format? And what has been holding back West Indies, especially in this format? Considering you, you guys are very good hitters, you have good batsmen, I think they, after two T20 World Cup wins as well in the, in the intervening period. So, what has held back the team and going forward, where do you think you need to improve and how, what are your plans to go about that? Um, in terms of what has held that back, I won't get into that. That is not necessary, that's in the past. Um, what is important for us, as you said, is that we came with a clear mission and a clear plan of how we want to approach 50 over cricket, how we want to pr approach playing the game and getting guys in certain situations to be responsible and accountable for those things. So there's a process, there's something that we're actually going through. And as I said, the results mightn't show straight away. Yes, we won 3-0 against Afghanistan. We're coming up against a better you know, opponents. Not saying that Afghanistan is a bad opponent or anything like that. Not taking any away from them. They have world-class cricketers in their bowling lineup and their batting lineup as well. But it's a matter of us focusing on what we need to do going forward. Again, there are things internally that we are working on, and you know, hopefully the runs and the results will take effect in time to come. Obviously, it's not going to happen overnight, and we are willing to work and work. And at the end of the day, 
where it takes us, it takes us if it's the right thing or the wrong thing. When winning is always is always good. You know, you want to create that sort of winning culture. You want to create that environment where you know how to win cricket games. You want to you know put yourself in positions to win. But sometimes you can play well and you still don't win. So the, the results sometimes, you know, it, it dictates what is being said about you as a team. But sometimes the process that you're doing is the right one. It's just not happening at that point in time. So again, for us it was good, and you know we want to continue on that track. We're going to continue every time we come out to try and win cricket games. That's the ultimate goal. But there are some things you need to do and processes you need to follow before that happens. Uh, hi, Karen. Uh, I think there are about seven or eight West Indian players whose names are there in the IPL auctions. Going into the uh, for preparation for the World T20 next year, do you think it's important that as many players as possible get picked? And does it like benefit the team in preparation for the World T20? Um. <laughs> Then getting selected in the IPL, yes, you know, no. It it doesn't for me is a matter of every time you get an opportunity to play cricket in whichever format or whatever it is, whichever franchise, you do your best and you perform, you prepare to do what is important at that point in time. Getting selected in the IPL, these things is out of your control. What is in your control is being able to prepare as an individual and go out and perform. Everything else takes care of itself. So Yes, getting picked in the IPL will be all as well for, for, for guys, you know, financially, you know, experience wise, you know, as well. But it's not something that should be in the forefront, you know, of your minds, you know, in order to, to succeed. You just need to have that willpower to want to do well every single time you get opportunity to step onto the cricket field. But do your skill sets improve uh, when playing in the IPL or You learn a lot. Um, you have the best players in the world playing in the IPL, no doubt about it. You're sitting around amongst some of the greatest coaches and the greatest players who have actually played the game, you know, as well. So in terms of learning, yes, in terms of trying to adapt and understanding situations, yes. But again, it can only happen once you're there and you can only end up being there to get that sort of knowledge if your performance is outside of that. It's up on a certain level. Let's stick to the ODA series You know, uh, as an outsider looking in, would it be a fair comment to say that you know there's a lot of talent in the West Indies, quite a few of whom are here now, but it's it's possibly the lack of a proper system that leads to that talent often not living up to potential. Would that be a fair comment? And if that is so, has that changed, or is that beginning to change now? That's a sort of a touchy one for me in terms of, you know, I think the talent is there. It's just a matter of us harnessing that talent. So we have to find a way to do it and find a way to make our talent into realization in terms of runs and wickets and performance on the cricket field. So it's going to be a collective effort, not only from us players, not only from us management, but the guys in the offices back home you know, as well. And I'm sure there are, there are a lot of people there you know, backing the talent and backing us to do well. So we're going to come together and you know, hopefully put things together so we wouldn't only be talking about talent, but we're talking about you know results as well. It's easy guys with the movement there. We're getting too much movement at the back there. Just settle down a bit there. We've got one more question to go over here. We've only got a few more minutes. So just take it <coughs> easy. We'll be finishing in a minute. Captain, uh, Wayne Brower has come out of the T20 retirement. Can you so sort of talk us to what kind of role you personally have played and what has gone behind convincing him to come back? Um, as Philip just alluded to, obviously it's great news for us as players having a guy of Bravo's caliber coming back into the four. And he has categorically stated that it's for T20 cricket. But as Philip stated, you know, tomorrow we have an important game. We have a one-day series coming up, which is more important right now than World T20. You know, the T20 series is over. I am happy, you know, as a captain to know that you have a guy of that caliber available, you know, for selection. Um, players in the dressing room are happy as well. I can give you that. But as we speak right now, we are more focused on the job at hand, which is that 50 over game you have to play tomorrow. Thanks, Captain. We appreciate your time. Thanks, ladies.